David Mendelblatt from St. Petersburg, Florida. I'm 39 years old. All right, Dave, you had a really good day today. So you're not a big guy. Uh, let's start off by explaining how you set up your rig. It looks pretty crazy right now. You can see you outside of the course. How do you set that up? I, I like to use a big gens, which is two segments. And um, with a big gens like that, I actually move my gooseneck back forward to about 16 inches. And, uh, and then I pull on out hall and Cunningham and Vang as much as I need, which today was pretty well maxed out. So you really put a lot of pressure on your movement in that gooseneck? I, I do, yeah. I like a lot of Vang. And you have a big crinkle on the, uh, on the Cunningham? The, so there's uh, a big crease? Big, you mean uh, there's a there's a big wrinkle down at the bottom yeah, big, of the of the sail because I, I pull it down so hard and if it's really windy, I'll I don't hesitate to put a reef in, where I'll let the I'll let the peak down a few inches so that when I pull the Cunningham tight, the Cunningham grommet is all the way down on the boom, and I don't find that that hurts me at all around the course. When you're down there. Didn't hurt you today. That's for sure. Um, describe your shooting style. It must be a little different with that. I find that with a big gens, the advantage of the big gens is, is that you can bend the upper spar a lot. And if you keep the main sheet tight, it makes the uh, it makes the gens more efficient. As soon as you start easing, you're not utilizing the rig uh, as much. So for my sailing style, I like to stay sheeted in as much as I can until I'm overpowered. Then of course I have to ease. But if I can stay sheeted in, it helps bend the spar and open up the leech more to depower even further. Do you steer a lot? I do a lot of steering. I try to go up the front side of the wave and down the back side of the wave to avoid plowing into them. And there was some pretty aggressive chop out there today. So yes. I was I was steering quite a bit and hiking as hard as I could, obviously. Where do you, where do you position yourself in the boat? Up close to the front of the cockpit or are you in the back of the truck? If I'm sailing across the waves, I do try to stay forward up near the front of the cockpit. But if I'm going into the waves, and sometimes one tack seems to be going into the waves more, I'll slide back as much as I need to to keep the bow from digging into the waves. How does that rig work downwind? The rig, work, the rig works fine downwind. I, I find that for a lighter sailor, it's actually an advantage to have a depowered rig downwind because you're not as likely to submarine and you can spend more time worrying about putting the boat where it needs to be on the wave as opposed to worrying about keeping the bow up so that you're not swamping all the time. What do you weigh? I weigh 145. What do you do for training? I run and bike a lot because I do triathlons, and that helps me stay strong with endurance. But hiking requires a lot of just pure strength, not so much endurance strength. So I, I lift weights, uh, do wall sits, and I have a hiking bench at home that I've been using. How often do you do that? The hiking bench. I try to do it two or three times a week. I just sit down in front of the TV, sit on the hiking bench, and hike for as long as I can. Any other quick tips? I just don't be afraid to depower. I, I think a lot of people are, are, are concerned that they're going to take too much power out of the rig, and I don't think you can do that. I think I think being aggressive about depowering, putting in a big gens, and consider, considering a reef can keep a small guy in the race when otherwise he wouldn't be able to. Certainly worth you, right? Thanks so much, Dave. Thank you.